Battletoads. It's a pretty good game until you play the Genesis version, then it just does what Nintendo don't. Make a good fucking port. Indeed. So we're here with Battletoads Genesis along with many ninjas. Indeed we are, Wizwar. This version of Battletoads is terrible! Easily one of the worst available takes, yes. I mean, there was so much potential on this version of the game. It's on a 16-bit console. Surely it should be better, right? Alas, an early Arc System work seems to have left out a few minor details for this particular take on the game. Mm, like making it good? Indeed. Now, for those of you who don't know who Arc System Works is, they're the people behind the Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue series. Yeah, those guys. So, despite the fact that this port of the game is not handled by Sega themselves, I'm still gonna make fun of them for making this version of the game. Indeed, we are, Wizwar. What's so bad about it? Well, to be honest, it's a really bad port, based or modeled on, whichever one it is, on the Japanese version of Battletoads to make it easier. You'd think with that in mind, plus having a more powerful console to work with, this would turn out to be a pretty decent take, right? But you all know, that's not why we're here today, don't you? You know, I was somewhat excited to see what the Genesis version of Battletoad does that Nintendo don't on the NES. I mean, I never knew there was a Genesis version until I saw it. I mean, dude, look at that super sweet-ass box cover. It looks more badass compared to the NES cover, doesn't it? The description on the back even gets you hyped for it, so let's check it out. Okay, Toads, let's get even. When the evil Dark Queen kidnaps both your best buddy and the best-looking girl this side of the Mazalian Star Cluster, what are you gonna do about it? Are you gonna cry, hide, call the Star Cops? No way, because you're a Battletoad, and Battletoads don't cry, hide, or call for help. Not even from Ghostbusters. Battletoads get real mad, and then they get even. So, strap on your blaster, which doesn't exist in the game, power up the Toadster, is that what they're called? And get on down to the Dark Queen's planet. But watch out, Toad. This lady's bad, and she's got a whole mess of really nasty surprises lined up for you in the Genesis version. Like the Psycho Pegs, the Mutant Rat Pack, Robo Manus, and the Saturn Toad Trap to name but a few. You're gonna need all your fighting skills to defeat her, even though it's a beat-em-up. The Battle Toad Butt, the Big Bad Boot, and the Nuclear Knuckles. Hey, and don't forget to take along the Jet Turbo, the Space Board, and the Speed Bike. And what about that Toadster you were talking about? Because you're gonna need them all, Toad, if you're gonna rescue your friends and get the frog out of there with your green skin intact. Hey, there's a typo over there. Based on the number one 8-bit video game of 1991, Battletoads was selected for best overall game and best theme and fun. People seem to say otherwise to that. Battletoads for Genesis captures all the same excitement and fun of the original Battletoads game. Aw oh, yeah, I can't wait to play this game and then find out that it's a load of bull fucking shit! Cue the popcorn, folks. This is about to get fun here. Up on starting the game, we get greeted with the title screen immediately. There's no opening cutscene or story whatsoever, unlike in the original NES game. Genesis done! What Nintendo don't. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, at least there is one saving grace, and that is the music is pretty legit awesome. It's a lot more appropriate than the NES version, sounding more metal and rock. In fact, most of the tracks are much better than the NES, and it's totally fucking rash. It did do a few things better, like having a cleaner two-player mode from the start, rather than the NES's odd drop-in arcade style. And that's where the bad things start to appear again. The cutscene between the Dark Dark Bitch and Professor T-Bird and the Genesis version... Looks like a real bland transition, and the Queen kind of looks like crap. The look of it all seems like something out of a children's typing game on a home computer back then. It just looks so lame. The cutscenes are somewhat weak here in general, compared to the rest of the title, which ranges from about the same to a tad better in spots, with a larger resolution and range of colors available. In the Genesis version, you start off with 5 lives instead of 3, just like in the Famicom version, where you don't have to press down A plus B to get 2 extra lives. Wait, so how are we talking about the game? Uh, what do you mean? Are we talking a side-by-side -side comparison with the original here? Essentially, yes. This is going to be a long video, isn't it? Well, we could cut it down by talking about the problems that are specific to the Genesis version. That I can work with. 
Here's a Genesis only problem. The hit detection can't detect shit even if it came out of its own asshole. Unlike the NES version, when you're in reach of an object, you just pick it right up. But in the Genesis version, you have to slow down, position yourself, then you can pick it up. This can be irritating because it's just so wrong, but it doesn't just apply to that. We'll come back to this to explain it further. Indeed we shall, because it's hard to miss this sort of thing, pardon the pun. Here's a fun example. In the original NES game, your toad's tongue would home in on flies to eat them. In the Genesis port, your tongue stuck to a 45 degree angle, making it trickier to get health back with how flies tend to spawn at odd angles you can't match easily anymore. Well, fortunately for the rest of level 1, it's pretty much the same till you get to the boss, which has a big fucking problem in that it's glitchy. Sometimes when you throw the ball, it just misses. This rarely happened in the NES version, like, jeez Battletoads Genesis, what is wrong with you? Genesis done! What Nintendo don't. The only nice thing about this boss is that you get a much better hyped up boss theme and level clear theme, and it's legit awesome. Heading down the Wookie Hole, the level is mostly intact with some alterations. One thing I liked in this version of the level is being able to rapidly kick the birds in the face to get one-ups. It's easier than timing your hits on the NES version, and it feels like they didn't program it properly because they probably didn't. But this I'm willing to accept because it's funny and useful. Sometimes, lazy design can work. Next is the Turbo Tunnels, and well, this level looks less like a brain and more of those kiddie pools filled with balls they jump into. And then you've got the space invaders that you can't hit while they're stealing your health, and then when you try to get your health back after you punch them out, you have to punch your health to get it back. Why did they feel the need to do that? Isn't running into them like in the original much easier? Hey, I thought the Genesis version was supposed to be easier. Battletoads Genesis, what's wrong with you? Genesis done! What Nintendo don't? Now you might be wondering, is this Turnbull Tunnel easier now? The answer is mixed. The slower speeds give you more time to dodge incoming hazards, but the questionable hit detection on the platforms lead to phantom wall face plants, falling through ramps, and platforms you swear you have no problem landing. This is much worse in two players where the game seems to have trouble having two toads going on a ramp where the other toad seems to just slip through. Hey, I thought the Genesis is more powerful than the NES. What's wrong with you, Genesis? Can't handle two toads on a ramp? Genesis done! What Nintendo? don't? Fuck you. Even though this port's based on the Famicom version, it's a poor study. Not only did the added ramps to the last cycle's platform suddenly disappear, this port doesn't even remember to give you any jump warnings this time around. Next up is the Arctic Caverns with another sweet track playing and a bull still shitting on you in this level. The physics on the ice blocks don't feel smooth and natural like on the NES, and any attempts to pick up the ice blocks may be a real pain because sometimes you unintentionally power smash the ice blocks, sending it flying, bouncing off the wall, and hitting you as a result. Now even though I said the ice blocks go flying, it doesn't really go flying like in the original. It just goes really fast and that's how it hits you. One bright side is that the snowmen lose their instant kill sucker punches. What's not so nice is that the changes don't stop there, with the stages moving platforms now being oddly smaller and quicker this time. Not so great if you're relying on muscle memory from the original. Oh yeah, easier than the NES version, right? Based on the Famicom Battletoads, which is the easiest one to beat, hmm? Hmm? Something we left out until now is how player physics have changed. Rather than the floaty jumps you might be used to, you actually get pulled back down a lot faster now. It does have some useful applications later down the line, but it does take some getting used to. Genesis done! What Nintendo? Ugh, level 5, Surf City. I wonder how they'll fuck this up. Well, actually, this level is mostly intact. Even though there are some small changes like lazy static whirlpool graphics, changing one of the enemy's health and the 1-up positions, and you can still do the same trick on Big Black to beat him, which is good. The random mine section from the original is not random here, which makes it easier to get through that segment. Though the hit detection on the mines is questionable once again. Genesis done! What Nintendo don't? But otherwise, Surf City worked out. Karnat Slayer, on the other hand, wasn't as lucky. You have much less time to hang on to the snakes due to the speed at which the snake's tail catches up with itself, as a small chunk of the snake vanishes when the tail reaches a turn, which is odd. But one of the weirdest changes, though, is the inability to climb here, which isn't in the original where you can, meaning you might land yourself in a spot where the snake's body outruns your ability to hang on and you plummet to your death. And jump. And jump over. 
All right, that that's more oh, like. Oh god, 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 no, Nine. no, 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 no! It just threw me off. That's what happened to me. Why? Come that's on. so bullshit. Like easier version, huh? Genesis done. What Nintendo don't. This level can go fuck itself in the face, but at least the music is quite good. What's not so good is that if you attempt the shortcut in the Genesis version, you'll find that there's a boundary box on the ceiling that you'll hit if you attempt to do so. The shortcut is still possible to perform, but now it's a lot trickier to do. Thanks, Genesis, for fixing the awesome shortcut from the NES game. I am so not disappointed right now. Volkmeyer's Inferno is another mixed bag of a stage. Rats can now hit down toads, the log's platform detection is actually more finicky than the original, and the bullet rat hitboxes are dodgy at best, making them much more likely to get some instant kills even in the best of situations. Genesis done. What Nintendo don't. Well, there is one extremely awesome moment in this level, and that's during the second portion where you're on the jets and it plays the best rendition of the music from the NES. Legitimately, it's awesome, but they still end up fucking this up, because if you die at any point during this section, it goes back to the part 1 music, and that sucks a load of fuck from a duck in a truck. But you really shouldn't be dying because this version is slightly easier, especially during the fireball segment where if you stay at the very top, you can never be harmed! Kind of like its own version of the glitch in the NES where you can avoid the missiles by hiding in the corner on the NTSC Battletoads. Anyways, you'll probably want to stay on top because they didn't program the fireballs right. Instead of coming at intervals, they just fire whenever they want, and this sometimes makes it so that the one-up you can get here is hovering over a fireball, which never happens in the original. Oh yeah, one-up. Yeah, I was trying to remind you. <laughs> oh my god, that's such a troll! No! That was troll. <laughs> Oh my god, that's such a troll! No! That was troll. Otherwise, Volkmeyer's Inferno isn't too badly ported as we get onto Intruder Excluder. Did we mention this game doesn't have the pause music? Because it doesn't. And that's wrong. Anything wrong with this level? Well, the electric barriers look and sound terrible, and oh, they fixed the jumping here. In the original, jumping wasn't perfectly programmed, but that was okay because you can clip into the edges of platforms which made platforming up easier to do. But now in the Genesis, you have to jump across what might as well be the Atlantic Ocean, aka real far out, and fly back to where you are to make it onto the platform above, making the vertical levels a real pain to go through. Especially in two-player, which is not fun when one of you flips off and dies. Oh! Oh. The way the springs work are not as fluid in the original, and they changed how a few things worked in the level. Like near the end of the stage, the electric barriers all fire at different times, and some of the gas firing tubes and fans shoot differently. Oh, but we'll surely get that kick ass boss theme during the Robo Manus fight, like in the original Battletoads, right? Well, since I brought it up, the answer is fuck no. The Robo Manus fight is honestly a mess here. For one, the game actually doesn't properly pan all the way up the screen in this port. Meaning your arena is actually cut a bit short here if you don't jump. Robo Manus is technically smaller and spawning a new paint job. His hitboxes didn't get the memo, so you'll take phantom deaths from time to time. He's oddly a lot more gun shy too now, which takes away from some of the original challenge. Oh, so close to the end of all this bullshit. Just got to go through the sewer tubes. Well, first off, the game plays the exact same music like the last level, which is weird, but kind of appropriate. But in the original, it was the Surf City music playing here, and that also worked out. The suicide robots aren't suicidal anymore, so you can just run past them, and it's kind of lame, but after all the bullshit I had to go through, I'm not gonna complain that much. Also, you remember that thing I said about falling down really fast? Well, we can use that to our advantage during the gear races in the first part, where for some reason, if while in midair you start punching, you begin dropping down really fast, and that gives you an advantage, especially in the next level. Careful when you do this though, as you can either get stuck or even lose a life if you get caught off screen here. The eels can actually stun lock you to death now, if they catch you, and the AI for the sharks is more aggressive here than their original counterparts. At least the hitboxes for the hammerfish are toned down somewhat, making them easier to dodge. Well, it's time for the gear races part 2, and these gears are faster for some reason, so you gotta be even faster. So Genesis, what was that about being based on the easy version of Battletoads, hmm? Genesis done! What Nintendo? 
After that part, the level's pretty much the same, with some level alterations like removing some spikes which I'm okay with, not so much with the water flashing at me, like, why was that needed? Do you want me to go blind Genesis Battletoads or cause epileptic seizures? Either way, no one needs that. What is also not needed is the rearrangement of the copters here. In two-player, it's such a pain in the ass to grab the second copter, but at least it's still fine in one-player. Finally, let's get on to Rat Race. Rat Race actually got a difficulty spike of anything for a few reasons. This port loses both the headbutt trick and the rat kick glitch to end the stage early. When gas tubes spawn on screen, they also now fire immediately, which forces you to slow down and wait to avoid instant death, which hurts particularly during the second leg of the race. The third leg's rat is actually somewhat slower, but still not easy due to the change in physics, making it harder to slip through platforms now. Fortunately, you can use the fast drop trick like in Terror Tubes to get down the level really quickly, and that's how I was able to beat the rats. But dropping down to the boss with General Slaughter, who looks much more odd that once again has no boss music playing, and you can't speed kill this guy unlike in the original where you can juggle him, which was fun to do. But not here! What's wrong with you, Genesis version? I mean, we can't even have fun? Genesis done! What Nintendo? So you have to slowly take him out, and it's fucking boring. Next. Here's where things really start falling apart control-wise, though. Klinger Winger relies on very exact directional controls to keep yourself ahead of the Hypno Orb, which the original NES controller did a fairly decent job of doing having only four directions. First Party Genesis controllers with their eight directional D-pads, however, prove almost nightmarish at times, as even slight diagonal presses slow you down, almost assuring a few lost lives along the way for unfair reasons. The boss fight with the Hypno Orb is just... pathetic. He doesn't even really attack you, and it flies off screen if you hit him too far, which is really annoying. But the only good thing is that because of how poorly programmed he is, he's really easy to kill quickly. But also sometimes your finishing move doesn't kill it, which always seems to happen to me. Oh, last level, the revolution. We're finally near the end of this game. Almost as an apology for the last stage, the revolution is actually really dumbed down here. Enemy AI is much more passive at best, shy of being at point blank range, and clouds now tend to glitch out, which dulls the challenge and your patience somewhat. The 16-bit music here is also a bit so-so, to be honest. Well, going back to the level, it plays pretty much the same with some alterations. There are funny moments in this version, like juggling the red rhino and green cloud for one-ups, which is a very amusing game to play, and very helpful if you have low lives and points. But then you find out that if you max out your score, it only shows 999,990. Like, what? That's so sloppy. I mean, it does nothing to the game in the end, but small touches like that really bother me because it shows how sloppy this version is. Like the final boss. The final boss fight with the Dark Queen herself is actually a bit of a letdown. This port has slowed her down a lot in comparison to the original, and she's actually a lot more vulnerable this time around with smaller attack hitboxes, meaning you can get away with some pretty sloppy play here. It's not as fun, to be honest. The ending sucks too. Just cutting off and returning to the menu instead of showing you rescuing Pimple and Princess into the T-Bird ship. In the NES, there were even four different endings with the Dark Queen you could get with her saying different things each time. But the Genesis version? Only one! So you're telling me, the Genesis version can't even get the random ending dialogue right? Like, wow, what a great fucking port, right? Not. Genesis done! What Nintendo? So that's Battletoads Genesis. Aside from the nicer box art, the legit awesome kick-ass music, the entire port sucks, despite what the seal of quality by Sega says. Sadly, this just feels like a rushed outsourced product too glitchy and inconsistent in its presentation to make for a good port. There was so much more to look forward to on this version of the game because it was on a Genesis, a much more powerful system than the NES. But the developers got sloppy and the game just flat out failed. Even if you are a fan of the Battletoads, God help you by the way, I can't recommend this port. What do you say, Wizwar? I don't recommend this port either, aside from say, collecting it, but that's about it definitely avoided. So stay tuned for more from WizWar100 and Mini Ninjas. It's time to give Battletoads Genesis the boot. Finally, the part of the review I've been waiting for. For Ninja, that was an awful execution of the game. I guess I better make up for it.